What is up people of the extranet? Taller here with Random Automotive today with a quick review and I wanted to tell you about CarPlay. So right now CarPlay is wired for my 2022 RAV4. That's the only way I can get it. And it is a little frustrating because I always have to remember to plug my phone in. Well today we're going to see if we can fix that. The folks at One Car Stereo sent me an AI box that apparently plugs in the USB port and turns the wired CarPlay into wireless. So, so let's see how easy it is to hook up and see how well it works. So immediately after opening the box, I found out the packaging is actually pretty nice. The one car stereo, this is the AI box light that they sent me to trial today. So we're going to go ahead and open it up and see what's in the box. So immediately you're greeted with the instructions and right off the bat, they seem very intuitive, pretty clear to read. I don't see any real issues with it. And then the actual unit itself is sitting here. Let's see if I can pull this out one handed. You get your USB to USB C cable along with a USB-A to USB-C adapter. My car has USB-A in it still. It has USB-C for charging, but A to operate the CarPlay. So this is the unit itself. It's pretty small. It seems pretty easy. It's got a little bit of plastic backing. You got a USB-C on one side and a USB-A on one side, on the other side rather. So I'm just gonna go ahead and immediately plug this in. So I'm gonna unplug my CarPlay. See if we can get rid of this pesky wire that keeps getting wrapped around my shifter. Okay, so immediately it's doing something here. And we're going to go ahead and hit the accept button there. And we're going to set up a Bluetooth device. So I'm going to come over to my phone. And I'm going to connect it via Bluetooth. Let's see if it comes up, if it's discoverable here. Not quite yet. All right, so I'm going to come over to my device, and it's the BT5E28. I'm going to go ahead and connect to it, like so, and it says it's connecting to iPhone. And we want to use CarPlay with the AI box. And I'm actually going to go ahead, this is not even plugged in over here, but I just wanted to show you guys that it's there. Okay, so my phone is not attached to anything. You can see here. And I have CarPlay. And I even get a battery indication that it's not charging. So I'm just gonna go through and kind of look at some of the basic stuff here. I can't play music today. And I have no idea what's playing there. But you can see, yes. So you can see that's working pretty well. You can see my messages. I can't pull that up now. Or my phone, I can't pull that up now. But you can see basically it's, it's pretty good. It um, doesn't keep the same settings as I had it wired. That's no big deal. I can bring those back. Um, so let's take a look at a few other aspects of it. Okay, so just upon trying out the interface a little bit and seeing how it works, um, everything looks good. The music plays well. The messages come through instantaneously. The phone calls look good, sound crisp. Um, the only thing that I did notice with this that is kind of more of a pet peeve of mine, it's not a huge deal. If you're watching a video on your phone, which I know some folks do in the parking lots and things like that, there is a pretty big latency from the video itself to the time that it comes through the car speakers. The audio quality is good, all that's great. Um, and I know that's kind of a Bluetooth thing, but I know there also is a buffer that like automakers put in to, to fix that. And it doesn't look like they've quite done that yet. Um, I know if I connect to my regular car Bluetooth, there's no delay. But I mean, if, if that doesn't bother you, if you're just playing your music going down the road using CarPlay and you wanna do it wirelessly, it's perfect for that. Um, just keep in mind that you will have a latency if you're watching a video on your phone, you may wanna plug it in if you do something like that. So you do get a little hidden menu here, the little bug here, because this is Android based, I believe, and um, you're running CarPlay on it. So we're gonna exit this, but stay in the interface itself. And this is kind of what it looks like. So you can get numerous apps. You can get YouTube? What? Let's try this out. Okay, so I did learn you do have to connect it to a hotspot or internet somewhere. Um, in this case, I'm using my phone as a hotspot. However, my car is equipped with a hotspot. Either way, you would have to do that. And because it's Android based, you gotta have the Wi-Fi on for that. But as you can see, I've pulled up my uh, YouTube channel here, and let's just uh, pick a video. We'll do this one and see how it looks. Of course, I'm sorry, it, it's not the box's fault that this is bright right here. It's just, it's a sunny day. Blake, what is the cat drug in now? That looks like a very stabby 1964 Bel Air. <laughs> this is great. I love this. This is cool. 
Okay, so I did exit out. Um, so th that's really cool. You have YouTube that you can watch on your screen in your car that's not designed for that. This car was never designed to watch a YouTube video on the screen, and you can do that. And there's also safety features integrated in uh, to the system setup that when you um, are basically when you're driving, it'll shut off your video if you want it to. I'd probably recommend that because you probably shouldn't be watching videos, but you know. And then you also have the ability to do Netflix. I don't have Netflix. I'm not going to pull that up and, and get signed in, but I want to get you at least to the part where you're, you can sign in and show you that you can basically watch full-fledged movies in your car. And I know that's not necessarily ideal, but, I mean, if you have, you know, a, a younger person or something in the, in the passenger seat or maybe even an older person and you're driving and you have someone maybe sitting in the middle back or something, you basically have an entertainment system in your vehicle. And that is something that this car, this 2022 RAV4 was never designed to do. But thanks to the AI box, you can do that. And you just sign in and, and it's that easy. And so while the, uh, the box does still have to be wired in, it's pretty small, as you can see. It's not huge at all. And it fits perfectly in this little storage cubby here. I can't talk. And it's out of the way. And now I can use CarPlay or watch movies or watch YouTube in my car on my car screen and never really have to worry about cords being everywhere. I can do away with this cord and you can charge your phone using the USB-C, you know, in the glow in the middle here and it charges a lot faster. It's, it's pretty impressive. I must say. Another thing I like about this is the fact that basically once you set it up, it remembers your phone. So when you start the vehicle, it automatically syncs up and CarPlay just comes up. So the only real complaint is just the Bluetooth latency. However, if you watch the video, you can go directly through the device on YouTube and that would solve that. Of course, you just don't wanna watch it while you're going down the interstate, but you know, that's, that's okay. So really overall, I mean, this thing gets like a nine and a half, maybe even a 10 out of 10. I mean, I can't see that it's any real big issues, you know, other than the little bit of latency on the Bluetooth side. Um, I mean, this basically transforms your vehicle. This is not an aftermarket radio. This is the radio that come in this car. And it was, you know, never designed to do half of what it can do now. And it's going through Android to do so. So if you want to hit these guys up, I'm going to put a link in the description. They are one car stereo. This is the AI box light. Go pick it up down below. Uh, go get you one because this is definitely worth the money. So until next time, We'll catch you in the next one.